What is up people, this is YSHQ and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use a 2.8 inch SPI TFT LCD display which has an ILI9341 controller on it. So to begin this thing, first we will need an LCD display and the one I got is from Highlight Go. Now Highlight Go was kind enough to provide me with this LCD, so major thank you to them. And the next thing you'll need is a Raspberry Pi and a few connecting wires. Now this LCD display that I have, it has a 2.8 inch display, like a, like a diagonal length. And on the back, it has an SD card reader and it also supports uh, and it also has a touchscreen panel on it but i won't be talking about the touchscreen panel in this video next what we will need is a library now there will be multiple libraries available but the first one that came to me was at uh, the adafruit python ili9341 library now this library is made for a raspberry pi to run on python so to install this library, all you need to do is just run these commands and the library would install itself. Once it's installed, all you need to do is just go to the library folder. So it's going to be CD Adafruit, CD examples folder. And in this folder, you will have three files. But first, let's look at the connection diagram. Since this isn't an official Adafruit LCD display, you will, need to con uh, you will need to configure it just as shown over here. Now, you can see the diagram. The VCC pin is attached to 3.3 volts, ground to pin 20, CS to pin 24, reset to pin 16, DC to pin 12, SDI to pin 19, SCK to pin 23, LED to the 5 volts, and SDO to pin 21. Once you do that, all you need to do is get back to the examples folder and run the Python script. Now the output shown over here is the output that is displayed on the LCD display. Let's try the other one. Now if you look at this, you, you can see the image moving. But if you notice it closely, there's a band. Now that happens because of the connection speed. You can only transfer data to the LCD display at a, at a, very, at a very specific speed, which is determined by the SPI controller. Now the last library to run will be the shapes one. As you see, it shows four different shapes, a background color, and two different fonts. Now let's dig deeper into this. Now if you look at the Python code, it imports image, image draw, and image front from PIL. Now PIL is Pillow, and Pillow is, a, is an image library for Python. Then we initialize the display, TFT, IL9341, DC, Reset, SPI, and the frequency or the speed. Now this speed is re really going to vary. Next, display.clear 25500. So what happens over here is this will clear the display, but instead of it being black, it would it would set the background as red since we defined 255 for the red. And this thing is RGB, hence RGB. G and B are zero, so green and blue are zero. Red is full at 255, hence the red background. The same thing with drawing the eclipse, the rectangle, the lines, and a polygon. Now for the text, draw a rotated text. We don't need to look at that right now. What we need to look at is how we, how we said send it. So first of all, we need to define a font. Now there's a default font which is already set in the library, but then you can also set your own font. Just make sure to have that font in the 
in the correct location and define that location over here. And the part after the font name is the font size. Next, draw rotated text. It's calling a library where it's making the display buffer. Then it's setting the text what needs to be written, the position, the the rotation, the font, and the font color. Now 255, 255, 255. That's the RGB code for the uh, for a white font. And if you look at the font library, it will draw the image. It it will set the width and height as sent. Text image, image dot new RGBA with a transparent background. Then it will render the text. It will rotate it. It will create a buffer. And then what we need, just need to do is like we need to display it. So display dot display in the brackets, and it will print the whole buffer on the display. And the similar thing happens for the image. What happens is you just input image as we won't be dealing with any fonts or any shapes and hence we won't be drawing anything. Then we just input the library, GPIO and the SPI ports. Then we just define the DC, reset, SPI port and SPI device. We initialize it again. We, we, we create the display class, we initialize it. Then we load the image, image equal to image dot open and the image path then we just ro rotate the image by 90 as you want to display it horizontally and not vertically and just resize it to 240 by 320 pixels and then we just output that display so so that's it with just the adafruit library but the issue for me was if you look at the outputs they had major banding issues on the top and the bottom and the display refresh rate wasn't fast enough. So for me, what did the trick was this library from B library. And this isn't being maintained anymore, but it still works. Uh, and all you need to do is just clone this repo. So you just need to like copy this thing, copy the link, go to the root folder, type in git, clone and the URL, and it will clone the URL. But since I already have it cloned, I don't need to clone it again. And what happens is like this one's this one has given me better performance over the Adafruit one. But but the usage is very similar. This also has the touch features integrated, but I won't be talking about them right now. The only change you you need to make is for these. So what you need to do is you need to change from input image to from PIL input image. From PIL input image. I'll show it to you in just a bit. Here it is from PIL input image from PIL input image draw and input text wrap. And once that's set, these are all the different registers which are, which are for the display. I, I remove the touch part since I won't be needing it, but I'll touch bases with it in a future video if I get back to using it. Next, these are all the things which are defined in the library, but we won't be concerned about this a lot since we will just be calling functions from this. The only thing you should keep in you or you would need is the definition names. For now, let's leave it there. The, the reason why I wanted to use this is because of a project that I'm working on. It's a home automation panel thing and right now it's in the early phases and I'm, te I'm testing it out with RFID card reader. I'll show its demo right now. It works as the Adafruit library. The only difference is like the images for me, they are they are displayed in the in the in the full display instead of just the middle part of it. And I can also like tune the SPI speed that it's running on. So that's it with this video. Thank you people for watching this video. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel. Share it. 
click on that notification bell to get a notification every time I upload a video. And stay tuned for more videos.